I've been meaning to make a review of my CCM Spitfire for the last seven weeks. I've had it for seven weeks now. So, here we are. I'm on the way to the pub. So the story goes, early 2017 CCM launch a bike at the MCE bike show called the Spitfire. And so I phoned them up on the Tuesday after and they said they'd nearly sold out. So I borrowed the deposit money off my brother. No, I can't remember if it was January or February, but the official line was that they would be rolling out of the factory by June that year. And now we all thought that was a little bit optimistic. We didn't know it was going to take 18 months before most of us managed to get our bike. In the meantime, they'd launched four or five other variations of the bike steadily getting more and more expensive as I think they realized that they were kind of shooting themselves in the foot or basically underpricing them and could have made more money. Uh, they also changed the tank, decided to make it out of plastic because I think they had too many issues or it was just too expensive, I don't know. But either way, this is now a plastic tank, uh, which obviously has its pros and cons. Main issue is if you were going to build a bike that looks like this, it would have a metal tank, surely. Anyway, I'm not here to talk about things that are now under the bridge, or whatever the term is supposed to be. I then picked it up uh, in July, caught a mega bus up to Manchester. So I'm now in Bolton. Very excited, waited a year and a half for this. Then got picked up by their marketing manager, I think, from the station. So this is us pulling into the CCM factory? Yeah, so I'm just going to park up. You don't get that sort of service from Triumph now, do you? I'm here, finally after a year and a half, I think. Something like that. And the bike is also here. Um and then rode back down from Bolton to Cardiff that day. All of the torque is somewhere in that sort of mid-range three to 6,000 revs. And that's where the fun is. And that's really where you want to keep the bike for the first few hundred miles. Nice and varied. Avoid sitting at one engine speed for a, for a long time. Um, so don't sit on the motorway for four hours riding to Cardiff. Four hours in from Bolton. Now only about... 40 minutes from Cardiff. Pretty good going. Did cheat a little bit and use a little bit of motorway to get out of the Manchester area, but it seems to have worked. Hope the bike doesn't mind. The moment I got on to sort of the Welsh back streets, the B roads around the Brecon Beacons. This bike just makes so much sense. It's so light, these tyres are so grippy. Well, so one difficulty of reviewing this bike is knowing what to compare it to. And obviously I can compare it to anything else that I've owned or anything I've ridden. There isn't really anything in this category. Um, Engine-wise, specification is fairly similar to the KTM 690s or the Husqvarna 701, the 600-ish single, six-speed, lightweight, um, roughly the same price as well. Um, so probably the closest comparison is the Husqvarna Invitapillin or something like that, because it's gone for the same sort of retro-modern styling, similar engine, but I really don't like that bike, so... I'm not going to compare it to that, because that would be unfair. So I'm just going to talk about the bike from a blank slate, not really comparing it to anything. Firstly, the engine, 600 single, you get what you pay for. It's talky, it's aggressive, it's not very fast. Probably tops out at about 100 depending on how fat the person on the bike is. Best fun had up to about 60 miles an hour, really. So, I mean, around town and really twisty country lanes, this thing is superb. I was riding through London the other day, and I was riding 
much more aggressively than I would do on anything else because you're coming up to traffic and it just feels like you're in a fighter plane you're coming in and you're just attacking the traffic so then obviously you get onto a more open road like this and it just feels like it's running out of power which it is which is, as I say, slightly frustrating. But that was the spec, we all expected that. That's not really a negative on the bike itself, but something to be aware of if you're contemplating buying something from the Spitfire range, or any 600-ish single for that matter. The gearbox is incredible probably the nicest gearbox I've ever had the pleasure of using. Silky smooth. Ratio is almost perfect. I personally think second is a little bit too short. Like that, I think second is too short there. But then the bike seems quite happy to be slightly over revved, so it doesn't really provide any real world problems. Why is this traffic here? I think there are temporary traffic lights or something up ahead. Never known it to back up this far. So there are obviously a few teething issues, which you would expect with any new build from a smaller company. I mean, even any of the big boys, they have a few teething issues and have to recall a couple times. That is one of them. My tank doesn't have the baffle in yet, which was a recall. Well, not a recall, because they didn't break take the bikes back. They sent their man out, man in a van, to fit baffles to all of the tanks. Mine doesn't have one. So, after you stop, all of the petrol rushes to the front of the tank and away from the intake, and it cuts out. Also, another little niggle, if you watch there, the gear indicator, it doesn't always know what gear it's in, never quite sure about is it 6th or 5th or 4th, it's okay up to 1, 2 and 3, and so my question is if it doesn't work why have it in the first place? CCM said that the distance between those gears is so small that it would be really difficult for a sensor to pick up, which is fair enough, but then just don't have it, because otherwise I'm sat here in six, riding along, and it's telling me I'm in fifth sometimes, which if it wasn't telling me I'm in fifth, then I would be quite happy and I would be fairly confident that I'm in six. But because it's saying I'm in fifth, I then go to change gear and look like a muppet because there aren't any more gears. I also don't like this. Why is that made out of plastic? I feel like it should be billet aluminium or something. I mean, the main talking point of the bike are the looks that incredible welded frame, and the little carbon fiber details and the billet aluminium details, um, and that you probably all know about. It is stunning, it's better looking than I thought it was, it's better looking in person. Everywhere I go, somebody stops me, in, which for the first day was great fun, and now it's kind of frustrating because you're getting fuel and it just takes a little bit longer. This bike rides more like, if I had to compare it to something, it's most like a supermoto. Um, except that it has the ability to not be a yob. You can ride it like a hooligan, and it enjoys that, and it's very good at it. But you can also plot around like you would on a Bonneville, and just look cool and sound cool. It actually even sits on the motorway quite well. I did about 40 miles on the motorway the other day. I didn't really want to, but I had no choice. I sat there at 80. It was a little bit buffety. But it was fine. It was comfortable. I did about 300 miles that day. Mostly not on the motorway. It was fine.
I wasn't sore anywhere, wasn't uncomfortable, didn't get tingly fingers from the vibrations. It's a little bit vibey as you'd expect from a single. I'm hoping to get some bar risers with the rubber dampeners in. I'll probably remove that, but it doesn't actually need them. I'm mainly doing that because I want the, like, the extra height. And figured if I'm getting for the extra height, I might as well go for the extra comfort as well. But as I say, I've done three, four hundred mile days and still got blood in my hands, no tingles, nothing. I also want to talk about the tyres on this bike. That's some Maxxis flat track 19 inch tyres. Tubed tyres because of the spokes. I'm guessing if you go for a variant that isn't spoked, it'll have tubeless tyres. But the tyres are the grippiest, softest compound I've ever come across on a road or an off-road tyre. They're totally ridiculous. You feel like you have maximum grip from cold. And it's just like grip all the way. Downside, they're not going to last very long. Upside is they're a lot of fun. They give you great confidence. And the bike itself handles incredibly well. Obviously, I can't put it flat out in a corner at 120 because it won't do 120. But for what it can do, matched with the tyres, just incredible. That front 19 doesn't feel too big, it is well. I am, however, tempted to look at a meter flat track tyre, also road legal, which I think is a harder compound. And so for touring, I think it's going to be a better option. We'll find out. I mean, maybe Maxxis on the front, Metas on the rear. I generally don't like Maxxis, so I'm excited to try the Metas. I'm going to do another video at some point with a few more of the negatives. A couple of them are teething issues which CCM are ironing out, a couple of them aren't. There's a few things that you could do yourself, and just a couple things that can't be avoided and you're just part of the nature of the bike. Really, this is just an initial rave about something that I really do love. I mean, at the end of the day, any day sat on this bike is a good day. Oh yeah, that's something that quite a few customers have commented on. Is there a little, a little bit of a wobble? If you hit a slight bump a little bit faster, the handlebars tend to do that a little bit, which is one of the niggles. You just put a steering dampener on it and that would probably iron that out. I mean, it's not violent, so I'm not worried. I'm sure it'll be fine. So apart from the next video of some of the negatives, my plan in the next week is to ride this down to Morocco, where I'm working for the next season. Um, I'll probably skip out France to catch the ferry to Spain, but the plan is to vlog all the way down. And so, if you like the bike, if you want to see more of it, if you want to see how that trip goes, then subscribe and follow. If you want to know anything else, just ask. Just incredible. Very much looking forward to getting to know the bike. And this is the place to do it. Ah. I have an audience. A Welsh audience. I'll show you. <laughs> Pretty cool start to a trip this. There's a lot of bikes in here. It's like being in a bike show in a boat. Still haven't really worked out how far you can go on one tank with this bike. So she ran out at 210 kilometers, uh, which kind of sucks. This is my view. Pretty much nothing. <laughs> 